Hey guys, GPA Jesus here. This video covers answering how a subsidy affects a monopoly, which we'll probably see on an econ test. Let's first learn what happens when we apply a per unit or lump sum subsidy to a monopoly, and then apply these concepts to a 2012 AP Microeconomics FRQ. So here we have a typical monopoly graph. One thing we should know is that subsidies or taxes only affect the cost curve. For these cost curves, let's break them up into their respective equations and analyze what changes what. So here's our ATC curve. ATC is is simply the average total cost. It's total cost divided by quantity. Total cost itself is simply fixed cost plus variable cost. So any change in fixed cost or variable cost will change your average total cost. MC is simply change in total cost over change in quantity. Notice that it's not total cost itself but a change in. In other words, the derivative of total cost. This means that even if total cost is shifted downwards or upwards, your MC will still remain the same. So looking at these two types of subsidies you will see, we've First have lump sum subsidy. Lump sum essentially handing a firm a flat out cash, but all at once. This means it'll affect the fixed cost of the firm. If we remember ATC will be affected if fixed costs is changed. Since it's a subsidy, that means your total cost will decrease, and so will your average total cost. So lump sum subsidy affects ATC and it makes it go downwards. So next we have a per unit subsidy, which subsidizes each and every additional unit. This means that average variable cost is decreased, shifting marginal cost downward, changing both MC and ATC to go downward. I also tried to make an acronym to show the cost curves that each subsidy affects. I made map of LA, M for MC, A for ATC, P for per unit. Per unit affects M and A. For LA, L is for lump sum, A is for ATC. Lump sum affects A. Combine them together to get map of LA. So now that we know how subsidies affect the cost curve, let's apply these concepts to real 2012 AP Micro FRQ. Before we continue, try the problem yourself. Steve Rail, the only provider of a train service, which means it's a monopoly, is currently incurring economic losses. For this monopoly, which is called Steve Rail, we first need to draw in our marginal cost, a big Nike swoosh. We also need our average total cost curve, which will place pretty high so that the firm is incurring economic losses. The question's now asking to find the loss minimizing price and quantity. Since we're looking for loss minimizing, if we remember, where MC meets MR is both the profit maximizing point and loss minimizing. Find where MC meets MR, and here we have our quantity, which we'll label as QM. And we can also look for the price by going from this quantity to the demand curve and left to the y-axis where we can find the loss minimizing price. Now we have to find the area of economic losses. Well, at this profit maximizing quantity, all of this is going to be their total revenue. However, we must also go up to the ATC curve to find their costs. This will be their economic losses. We now have to look for the allocative efficient point and label it as QE. Allocatively efficient quantity simply means the socially optimal quantity. This is essentially where supply meets demand, as MC is supply where it's above AVC, and we also have our demand curve. However, your teachers will flame you for saying that, as it's actually where price meets marginal cost. But it's easy to remember for supply and demand. So here would be our supply and demand, which we have to go down and label as QE. Part B asks what will happen if the monopoly raises the price above the loss minimizing price and asks if total revenue will increase, decrease, or change. We must remember that a monopoly, they will always operate in the elastic portion of the demand curve where marginal revenue is positive as if they go past then their total revenue is decreasing. What do we know about elastic markets? By increasing price, you're decreasing total revenue. So what does this mean? If the monopoly raises its price, its total revenue will decrease. So for part B, we'll just write decrease. So we're now approaching the subsidy section. Part C is asking about what will happen some of the effects of a per unit subsidy in its quantity and consumer surplus. First thing we have to do is draw in the per unit subsidy so we can get good visual on it. So if we scroll back up, we must remember that per unit subsidy affects MC and ATC and it'll make it go downwards. The costs are now lower because of the subsidy. So what we can first do is shift downwards marginal cost. We can draw in our new marginal marginal cost curve is maybe here. So here's our MC1. We have to indicate the one since it's the new one. If we go to MC meets MR as this is the loss minimizing quantity, let me clear up some space. And then the quantity has now shifted to the right. So for part one of C, which is asking for the quantity, we can say it has increased. And then part two asking what happens to consumer surplus. Since the new loss minimizing quantity has changed, we now have to find the new price, which if we go up to our demand curve and then go to the y-axis, this is 
is our new price, we can actually see that price has been lowered. This means there are now more people, this section specifically, say this guy's called Derek, why not? So this Derek guy, before the market price was too high and he wasn't willing to buy it, but with this lower price, he's now willing to buy it and actually is willing to pay more than the current market price with this new per unit subsidy imposed on the monopoly. So we can now say that consumer surplus has increased. Subsidizing a monopoly will both increase the quantity they produce and decrease the price they sell at, approaching allocative efficiency and decreasing deadweight loss. And then lastly, for part D, it's asking for a lump sum subsidy provided to Steve Rail. If we scroll back up, we must remember that lump sum subsidy only affects the ATC curve. That means his average total costs are decreasing. So for part one where it's asking if deadweight loss is changing, as we can see, MC Meets MR is still the same as before, and the deadweight loss is still the same, since only the production costs have decreased, not the actual price. So deadweight loss remains the same. And finally for part two, will Steve Rail's economic losses increase, decrease, or not change? Well, while this monopoly's total revenue is still the same, his cost of production have been lowered as ATC has been shifted downward. So that means the losses that Steve Rail and Curse is actually decreased because he now has less cost to pay for with the same total revenue. So for part D we can just write decrease. So hopefully this video helped you on dealing with questions that ask about lump sum subsidies and per unit subsidies being imposed on a monopoly. GPA Jesus out. I